All three major U.S. stock indices are now in bear market territory. What is a bear market exactly? A bear market occurs when stocks fall by more than 20% from a peak. The Dow Jones has entered that territory for the first time in more than two years Monday. The S&P 500 is down nearly 25% from its record set in January. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq, which is a cliche that means it has a lot of technology stocks, has fallen over 30% since hitting a record last November. But what does this really mean? For that, I want to bring in Akane Otani. She's a reporter for The Wall Street Journal, where she covers the U.S. stock market and investing. So, Akane, let's start first with the question, what is the difference between a bear market and a market correction? It's all about the percentage decline. So a bear market is typically when we see stocks fall 20% from a recent high, whereas a correction is a little bit less severe. That's typically a decline of at least 10%, but less than 20%. And so one obvious result is that people, the, the, their stock prices go down, their 401ks lose value. What does it mean, though, for, say, corporations that are trying to seek to raise cash in the equity markets. Does that change their behavior? Absolutely. I mean, we've actually seen uh, this year has ended up being really a disastrous year for companies seeking to uh, launch IPOs or, in other words, to go public in the stock market because conditions have been so volatile. It really makes it difficult for you know these financial officers at big companies to make plans about entering the stock market when things look very shaky and it's hard to tell if you enter the market um, if there even would be a lot of demand for your shares right now. So if there's not much demand for shares, then companies that were relying on the sale of those shares to generate money that they could use to buy plants and equipment and maybe hire more people they're not doing that. So is this the slowdown, uh, essentially, that the Fed has been trying to engineer, where there's just less economic activity and therefore they hope less inflation? Well, we've certainly seen that pullback already hit, you know, particularly, I think, within the technology sector. Um, a lot of startups that have been hoping to enter the markets this year have had to delay their plans because of how badly the stock market has been doing. And thus, we've seen a bunch of uh, companies announce layoffs or uh, they've decided to close down stores or, um, you know, decide to delay hiring plans, things like that. As far as the broader economy, though, I think a lot of investors have been surprised by how resilient things have been. Um, but there certainly is a lot of uncertainty and, and sort of unease about how much longer that can last for. I mean, we have seen consumer spending continue to be pretty solid despite inflation being near multi-decade highs. And so the concern is how long is that going to last? especially as the Fed continues to keep raising interest rates well into next year. And so what do you think I, uh, is at the root of this, uh, this bear market? I mean, inflation's been around for a while, and, and I know it's hard sometimes to, to put a single finger on what the, the cause is. But if, if you had to, from those you talked to and had to make an assessment of what's behind this bear market, you've already made the distinction sort of between the market and the economy being two different things. What's behind this bear market? I think a lot of folks bring it back to the Fed. I mean, you think about what happened after the great financial crisis in 2007, 2008, uh, the Fed cut interest rates to record lows. And then we saw a very long period of stocks doing incredibly well. And a lot of that investors were attributing to the fact that interest rates were so low. So it really made it so there was sort of very little alternatives out there for investors. If you wanted to get good returns, you didn't want to put your money into cash or into bonds. You wanted to put it into the stock market. And we saw a little bit of a similar dynamic after the pandemic hit. You know, the Fed cut rates to very low levels again. And again, people were very, very enthusiastic about the stock market. Uh, and fast forward to this year, we're seeing the Fed actually take part in the most aggressive uh, rate increases in, in decades. And so that is really sort of taking the steam out of this rally that we had been seeing powered by basically Fed policy for many, many years. So I would say that reversal has a lot to do with why we're seeing markets behave the way that they are. And as a last question, we are in fresh territory. A lot of <clears throat> the ways people think about the economy have a little bit been turned on, on their heads and predictions have been wrong. So with that caveat, 
What is the normal trajectory for a bear market? And are we, does it look like we're in normal? Or is this also an instance in which um, past performance is no prediction of uh, future events? Well, as you say, it's very difficult. So the caveat is uh, this is all based on historical data, but you know, we do typically see a bear market every four to five years. Um, and of course, our last one was during the pandemic. So this one came a little bit sooner than average. And unfortunately, the bad news is it typically does take quite a bit of time uh, for stocks to get out of the bear market or to rise at least 20% from their lows. Um, what we saw in the early days after the pandemic hit was a very extraordinary situation where stocks really rebounded incredibly quickly. But a lot of investors believe because the Fed is so insistent, it's going to keep raising interest rates to fight inflation, that that is not the scenario we're going to see. Instead, we might expect to see something more in line with, um, you know, past recessions, or sorry, past bear markets where it's taken you know, over a year sometimes, sometimes over two years for stocks to return to prior highs. So, uh, you know, history does show that it does take quite some time, but on average, stocks end up higher. Right. Okay, Akane Otani, I'm grateful for you walking me through all of that. Thank you.